Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video we'll be taking a look at how Getafe used Kike Setien's 4-2-2-2 formation in order to cause Barcelona trouble. I will be leaving a link in the description for the game between Barcelona and Villarreal that you can check out to have more background of how this was so effective. Even though Barcelona won that game, we'll also be taking a look at how Getafe managed to get a draw in this game. If you're new around here, please do subscribe to the channel. We'll appreciate it very much. Let's get started with this tactical analysis. Initially, Getafe lined up in a 5-3-2 formation. However, when Barcelona looked to build up from the back by splitting their center backs, Getafe looked to press in a 4-2-2-2 formation. However, you would see now in this picture, you would only have like the single pivot. But whichever side Barcelona looked to press from or looked to build through, excuse me, one of that center backs, let's say for example, they would build through Barcelona's right hand side. Then this center back would come out and they would have like the 4-2-2-2 formation. Barcelona was having a lot of trouble because the center backs were covered. Whenever the ball came to like the full backs, these guys were all ready to come and press over to this side. However, Testegen looked to go constantly to Rafinha straight from the back. However, these guys had two players in these regions to be able to cover Rafinha. And Barcelona actually had a lot of trouble because Rafinha was totally isolated against these two players and Robert Lewandowski was nowhere to be found. Rafinha later on had to find a ball constantly because Getafe actually pressed from an angle meaning that Barcelona had to sometimes go to Sergio Roberto where Munir and Maximovic would actually cover Sergio and Roberto, Sergio Busquets and Roberto where Alderete and Iglesias were covering Rafinha and Kessier. Duarte and Jenny actually along with Miller had three against one against Robert Lewandowski. So this was actually great strategic pressing from Getafe. Barcelona really started to open Getafe up in order to have more control over the ball because Araujo and Sergio Roberto were starting much more wide on the right hand side in order to draw these guys into a press. That is where Sergio Busquets actually and Cassier started to form like this sort of diamond around these two players. However, in order to maintain the success or the stability in midfield, the manager of Getafe actually had these fullbacks coming up over here. This wouldn't uh, allow Rafinha to have more space actually because Alderete and Duarte actually still would maintain the numerical advantage over Rafinha over there and Robert Lewandowski couldn't be a problem because Jenny and Miller actually still had a two versus one in this region. Barcelona constantly stepped up and had to find ways to get through this. However, Rafinha and Robert Lewandowski was having a hard time. So Getafe know if they could shut them down, Barcelona would have a lot less effectivity or effectiveness, excuse me. However, that just allowed Ter Stegen to go long more often than he wants to. Javi did get the idea of letting Kunde and Alba do exactly the same as what Araujo and Sergio Roberto did. This did make it difficult to, for Stegen to find his center backs, but that would mean that these guys up front would each be two on one in this region. Therefore, Javi did manage to pull these midfielders out of position because the fullbacks couldn't both come up because that would totally leave out um, Balde and Rafinha, meaning that one of them had to stay. And therefore, Barcelona did manage to get the ball into Balde, which meant that these guys would have to go up. And it was often Gavi who made his way through into the region right here. And this totally just brought back and drew back the whole Getafe side into their normal 5-3-2 formation. way for Getafe to be able to keep up was reverting to a 4-3-3 formation where they could now actually press from an angle much better and they would now have a lot of numbers on whichever side they tried to press or get Barcelona to play on. Now however, Ter Stegen was actually very good 
and because Miller actually had to go up, the Stegen time and again found Gavi, and Gavi coming towards the ball drew a centre back out with him, which could allow Robert Lewandowski to get in behind. Because of this, Getafe reverted back to a back five, because when these players went out, Getafe actually had enough players in order to follow Gavi everywhere where he would go. We did see Alba starting so wide, did allow Getafe to defend better against us, but we also saw later on that he inverted along with the other fullback when Sergio Roberto got injured. Xavi deserves much more credit in this game for his tactics because he kept on altering and countering all the tactics that Getafe had. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough personnel or the correct personnel necessarily in the right positions to be able to do this. Because Alba inverting did give Barcelona a lot, but we didn't have Dembele or your, your good guys that could dribble around players in this game. Thank you very much for watching this short tactical analysis because that's not much tactics that you guys don't already know in this game. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and that will help us a lot. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.